Welcome to Rockcast. Dire Sync Production. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rockcast 2.0. Episodes don't matter anymore. We're just calling these interview series Quarantine Madness. And today I have the lovely and incredible and one of my best friends in the whole wide world. Um, and there's literally two, maybe three. One of them's not doing too well. Anyways, uh, Allison fucking Rose, a.k.a. Hi. The Pufferfish. How you doing today, buddy? How you doing? Uh, put the puffer fish away. Well, you said puffer fish, so I felt like I had to deliver. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's what makes you such an awesome human being. A couple little facts about Miss Rose here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, she works at Silver City now. You are HR, Brewery. right? Or Silver City Brewery, yes. HR, admin, uh, merchandise, and um, beer tender sometimes. And that did also, yeah, instead of getting two jobs or three jobs like a normal person she just created a bunch of jobs and then it's like and all bartend uh, what are you drinking today from your fine company i'm assuming it's a, a rain or shine rain or shine oh i get it rain or shine i can't figure out the camera thing um it's you hold a, the camera still and you move the can around <laughs> shut your face That's uh, it's, a, it's a hard seltzer uh much like white claw but way better Ugh, fucking people. I'm so glad. I quit drinking right before the White Claw thing happened, and that makes me so happy inside. I'm very happy for you. Um, Allison is also a local comedian, one of the finest women in Kitsap County and possibly beyond. She's also a comedy hostess, at least was, and I'm sure will be again someday. Um, she has a master's degree in business and a journeyman's degree in klutz. Uh, this woman... Cannot seem to stay this way. And and also dogs really like the way she tastes. Uh, within within the quarantine, not only did she get quarantine, but she got mount on by a fucking dog and then fell down a bunch of stairs and fractured both of her feet. Um, she and, mar- and a mild concussion. And a mild concussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that just makes things funner. Uh, and I'm- she's a dog mommy of uh, two dogs, one of them who is most... Here they are. Herbert. Yeah. Here they are. And right now she is at Castle Allison. Did you ever come up with a name for your little... Castle Rose, bitch. Castle Rose. Castle Rose. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to call you a bitch. I'm sorry. I let it slide. Did you notice? Know I was just like, all right, you know what? You're not Everybody a bitch. Gets one. Oh, hey, he's, he's not a bitch. He's not a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm pointing at it. Not- so how you liking the new home? I mean, once I you get past it. it trying to kill you, I mean, it's like you're living in a haunted house, but you're the haunting. Like, right. <laughs> Look at it, though. Yeah, it's the nice. only issue with the house is me um, and my dumb ass. So uh, I love it. It's fucking adorable. Look, let me show you my giant yard. Yeah, you got an amazing yard with lots of cool stuff. Boy, it sure is pretty out there today. What a lovely day. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So yeah. the the whole the whole quarantine, and I'm on double quarantine now because, um, you know, I was on normal quarantine like everyone, and then I broke both my feet, and now I can't leave my house. So yeah, I feel and, well, and your house is literally like <laughs> it is not built for the handicap. No, it's three it's three hundred square feet. It's three hundred square feet. It's not built for a lady who well, it's straight up hill too. And like get to your house. Yeah, you can't really leave right now. It would take you forever. You have to scoot down on your butt. I I would, and I haven't tried that yet. It I I went back when I could walk before I broke my feet. Uh, it it was ninety seven steps Jeez. from my house to the street. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot Long of walking. Steps. Good for you if you you know how to walk up and down stairs. You know. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Well, how's my ankles? Nice. How's my ankles? Your ankles great. Your bangs are popping. It's funny. It, my first subject was new home. The second one was accident prone. So we'll cross that. <laughs> one. 
Uh, check and check. How about being essential? How are you dealing with that, with that little mind game? Well, I, I haven't mean, worked for a week because of my feet. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, but, but other than that, um, I feel very fortunate that I am essential because if I was not essential, uh, I would not be able to pay rent. Then I would have to move back back in with my dad. Yeah. And that would be bad because dad is elderly, you know, and so then I would feel really nervous about, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's tracking a true thing. Yeah. Are you able to do any work from home at all or? No. No? Oh, that sucks. I know. Have something for you to do. But it is what it is, dude. At least you're healthy-ish. I'm alive. So there's alive that. And not kicking. As I was uh, falling down those stairs Jesus uh, and then smacked my head on the concrete wall, I literally thought, fuck you, universe. Like, you're going to kill me this way in the corona times. You yeah, know? man, like, you really got hit with a, with, with a bunch, man. Just, like, you get the new place and everything's on top of the world, you know? That's, that's how I felt, too. We all got, you know, that's it. That's And that's, it's a new horrible thing, I feel. But, like, every time I think about how bad it is for me, I'm like, dude, there's, you know, these, these homeless people wandering around. And there's just people that can't get it either. And th those I almost feel the worst for because they're going to really get hit hard. When this doesn't end, but yep. I really didn't want to talk too much about that. Um, okay. Other than, uh, maybe Bob would like to see any positives that you've gotten out of it, but uh, I have some positives. Yeah, you have been doing dinner for dads again. I, I do yeah. want to see a video of you like chucking like a styrofoam container at his doors and like food to your old <laughs> man. Sorry, Rob. No, I mean like okay. Here's my positives. Um. So I'm an extrovert, and so the things in life that are are healing to me and that are um, like like my life source is being around people. So yeah. this is kind of my worst fear, yeah. and in this, I've been able to very quickly adapt to okay, I can't be around people. I have to figure out how to be happy and how to gain energy in this new world of not being able to build energy from other people. And I feel pretty fucking good about like how far I've come with that. So and that's, I, we all, we both knew that was a, that was going to be a battle for you. And that was what I think really, truly scared you. And a lot of people, I, I won't say their names, but I got people right now that are like freaking the fuck out. Cause yeah. all of a sudden they're getting, they're like, well, now I'm not doing this. Now I'm stuck in this situation, whatever it is, be a single person like you and I, or be a people with families and right. 10 years of flowing by because you're raising kids and working your ass off. And now all of a sudden you're faced with you who you haven't seen in so long. And even in your case, ever since I've known both of us, think about the what we've done since we've known each other, Allison. I mean, yeah. we both, we met at a bar, wasted, singing karaoke. After we got past your racist issues against furry-faced men, uh, we bonded. Not racist. Not racist. Beardist. 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 Although I, I noticed weird. you never had a, pre a problem with black people's beards, just whitey, but whatever, that's cool. Hashtag well, all you, all you white boys with beards look the same. I'm just saying. Obviously. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That still hurts my feelings. Well, all you girls with bangs look like Russian whores. So, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dog, <laughs> you, know, you know, coming from me, though, that ain't no compliment. You, me? Russian whore. <laughs> uh, speaking of Russian whores. Is anybody else like way too into porn these days? Not really. I I, I don't know. I uh, for me, porn is just like a tool. It's like ten seconds. I'm done with it. Move on with my day. I, I don't believe in treating myself from my biological instincts. Yeah, Plus, I've been I've been I've been over I've been a long time with myself now. And it's like yeah. yeah, but yeah, no, the whole world is even. I noticed on Pornhub they were like we can get through this together. 
we'll we'll come through this together like all their advertisements i'm like yeah way well done porn porn is the number one industry that has ever propelled any technology propelled Propelled? yeah does that sound does that that sounds right I don't know. Propelled. <laughs> Propeller. Propelled. I, Propelled I feel like, forward. B A B A. I feel like for me, porn, um, like in those moments in the day, especially like being um uh not able to move because of my stupid broken feet. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in those moments of the day <laughs> where uh, where I get kind of like super depressed and I'm like, oh God, what, how am I going to make it through? You know, I'm like, oh, I just like turn some porn on for a little bit. Ugh, that sounds like desperation to me. You know, you can also mm-hmm. garden, you can crawl around on your hands and knees out there in the dirt. You know, it, it is what it is. It's just, you'll get bored with that too. And then we just get Actually, deep into ourselves. You're yeah. right. I've already started getting bored with it. Like yeah. I've already like made it down such dark paths, you know, because I've seen <laughs> it all. And then you get to these like real creepy moments in the porn, and you're like, ooh. Yeah, that's when you gotta either power through it or start asking yourself some serious questions. That, that's where I'm at. I'm asking myself some serious questions. That's why I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not 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 about the porn but in there's, general there's there's just there's 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 a lot of people right now that are over accessing a lot of people you know everybody's this weird like the stimulus check that must be nice i don't get any of that i don't get a fucking penny of it the child support gets it i'm the only bill that exists that, it goes uh, straight to child support yeah, yeah fucking fuck it that's that'll be uh, what 1200 bucks up yeah but i'm working too so what do i need it for you're working your buns off yeah, but I mean, like, literally, for me, it's why I don't have food stamps. The only assistance I have is for my uh, insurance for cover my pills because they're yeah. the model. You I'm should get them. you should get food stamps. They pissed me off. I just applied for <laughs> food stamps. Yeah, no, I don't need food stamps, dude. I'm I do. People do though. People that are poor, people that don't have ways, people that are crazy. I've always been that way though, man. It, it's I don't know. That's just me though. I mean, it's there, but. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be paid off in another decade. Fuck, man. That's fine. That's about I how long it take before I can fucking afford it. I miss you too. But you're right I miss there. You a lot. See? You're right but there. It's not the same. Isn't it though? I mean, 90% of our conversation, you stare at your phone anyways. I do not. Everybody does. Everybody does. I mean, it's what we've become. I was thinking about this before. I was like, dude, when I grew up, man, not being bored, one little black and white TV in a room that you live in with the 40 below zero, you can't go outside for months. So maybe I've just been trained a little better to handle this isolation, but I admit this sucks. I mean, I'm in a wonderless room. I can't smoke pot in here or do anything till after 11 p.m. Um, I'm in constant fear, you know, of of being fucked with and it, it does suck and and I, I i need to actually come over tomorrow before work and use a shower uh if i I'm could good. but uh yeah you know it is what it is right now we got to get through it and uh i'm basically just ignoring everything that's going on if i get it i get it if i don't i don't my sister made me these badass masks nice uh, yeah you know i mean i'm not trying to stop from getting it you're gonna get it i'm just trying to make sure i don't kill someone somebody else and, right. uh, that's yeah you know i haven't heard i mean it's not like it's blasting off in kitsap county or anything we don't seem to be taken off on it i haven't been reading the reports or anything though so i don't know we're at about 135 cases which when you think about it that's probably like 700 cases right because of the limited yeah. testing well and not only tested like you and i can have it right now you see yeah. that's the thing with people like the science saying like if you show any symptoms of a cold or that by the time they're showing those heavy of the symptoms, they've already spread it. You yep. know, so yep. that's what they're trying to figure out about it. But I don't know, and I'm not a scientist, and there's so much misdirection and bullshit that it would just my instincts were to pull out of the conversation. And some people say that's stupid or whatever, but I'm like, you know, there's people that go to school their whole lives. I love all the conspiracy shit, like the CDC, like those people, you know, when they got interested in biochemistry and 
and went into this group of it and everything else. They went into it for the love of science and for, you know, research. And, you know, I'm sure there's one mad scientist in every thousand, but this is the real world. And so I get really tired of that shit. And, you know, the it's all been handled with incompetence and arrogance. And, and we all knew growing up watching Sesame Street that these are bad traits. And yet somehow... So we're just going to deal with it. I, uh, I see a lot of silver lining in this. I've seen a lot of bees. Uh, I, I see uh, the skies clearing up, and, uh, and we're showing this is a test run of a real disaster, a real, real one, something that's rampantly bad, like a comet or massive, massive worldwide destruction, at least we know, or another big disease when this yeah. meets. At least we know now that yeah. most of us, some of us, will work together to – to pull out of life, you know? Yeah. It's, sunny. it's busy as fuck out there right now. And it's sunny out and people are just, it's crazy. It looks like a normal day out there. And that's what scares me about it, dude. You know, and am I any different for going and going off on a trail somewhere and going hiking? I mean, no, absolutely not. I think, I don't know. Cause they say it's airborne, but at the same time, when I'm going out like the Dickinson's, I go off away from everybody. I'm not going where everybody else is going. And yeah. your day to day, you work among people. So, yeah. fuck, like you're exposed. You, if you're going to be exposed, you're going to be exposed. Yeah, but then it's more of are you, are you infecting other people? Where's our responsibility to? I know. The, I the know. needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I got five, six kids stomping around out there. I need them to not go into the Mad Max apocalypse, but that's where we're heading. I mean, they're doing massive rallies. I just catch bits of the news when I scroll through Facebook. But enough of that shit. Um, Can I just say one more thing? Can I just say yeah, one more absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Here's my biggest concern. My biggest concern is that eventually things are going to go back to normal-ish, right? They're going to go back to normal-ish. And we're going to have corporations marketing bullshit trying to get us back to put all of it, like buy things right like right. forget forget that our world just stopped for a point in time forget all that go back to spending your money on bullshit and that's scary to me because right now we're in this incredible moment in time where we literally are seeing the world stopping. Yeah. All the Thank things God. that we all the things that we know about the world are stopping. Thank God. Thank God. But this also gives us the opportunity to look at our government, our government's response. Yeah. Our government's response, our people's response. Here's the things that bugs me. We control the media, yet somehow the media has become control of us. In the 30s yeah. and 40s, they knock that subliminal shit out. They don't subliminalize anymore. They overload. That needs to stop. The massive population burst, you know, there's a reason why New York gets spread like fucking wildfire. And yeah. dense, I mean, yeah, and, and looking at ourselves as human beings, but we are in control of all of that. But but we're so selfish that we, we look past it to for our everyday convenience instead of the whole, you know, you th people throw words out like capitalism, socialism, communism. These are old ideas and outdated, obviously, because nobody, when they made those shit, ever thought of tech technocities like this and, you know, the, the yeah. way it's going. And the even you look at it from every, even dating's gone to a digital platform where people are meeting, hooking up and fucking and going on and spreading diseases. And then you look at a, you know, the, the, the classes are split. There's really two classes, poor and rich. You know, there's no yep. middle class anymore. And yeah. Then really again, you look at people like my daughter, who at 20 years old saved her money for fucking four years, fucking busted yeah. her ass, got her fucking degrees and everything, and just bought a house at 20 years old. So Which is fucking well, amazing. Good for her. Yeah, she didn't need a fancy car. She didn't need anything. I mean, she worked at a cell phone place, so of course she has the best phones, but... So... We people like that give me hope. People like you and I give me hope. Most of my pothead customers give me hope. It's, but it's not going to happen because Americans are just freedom, baby. They think freedom means they can do whatever they fucking want, and a lot of people would rather die. It's not freedom. It's fucking selfishness and fucking idiots. 
Well, and this country has been trained in the last eight them. years to question everything. It used to be question everything. Yeah. But now, like, people are questioning everything, everything, yeah. just, just for fun. It only takes one person if somebody's like, well, the sky is blue. Yeah, well, really, it's more of a, you know, and then boom, like, there's an argument. And it's, it's with everything all the time, all at once, all coming in. At the same time, the rest of the world isn't stopping. You still got a presidential election. You still got bombs going off in terrorists. You still got fucking weather and everything else and uh yeah so the longer we get pitch slapped back the way the future could be better or we could just devolve into a bunch of floridians and alabamians and arkansasians and then martial law starts spreading and then everybody uprises because you know we're america and they're gonna find out so i hope not i have hope i always have but i also hope that that fucking trump wouldn't be elected president Pretty sure he's going to be our president now for a very long time. You know? I know. But I know. You got to stay sane here. You got to find depressing, things about yourself. But it's depressing. I'm mad about it. But that's the point. That's, that's what I was trying to say is like, we need to stay mad. Because when shit sort of gets back to normal and we're all on the internet, buying our shit, going back to stores and doing all that shit, we're going to forget. Well, a lot of that stuff's um, going to go away. Our economy is never going to be like that again. It's been switching towards uh, buy online anyways. These corporations just realized how much money they could actually save by not having people in their buildings. A lot of, and there's it, some positives that could come from that too, hopefully, you know? I mean, sure, there'll be sure. less traffic, there'll be less pollution, there'll be less stress, people will be at home more. I mean, this is something that needed to change anyways in a technology. We're going from yes. an industrial straight uh, country into beyond commercial now, you know, and we need to get back all of our trade. And, you know, it's going to set up new wars. I mean, this is, this is the beginning of, you know, the end. Like Joe Rogan said, man, we have watched throughout all of history, entire civilizations get wiped out by a pandemic. Just because it's 2020, we can't keep up with everybody getting sick at once. That's what people don't get. Best health care yeah. in the world, my ass. I fucking hate Right. This. And I 100% agree. But what I'm saying is that I'm scared for when things get sort of back to normal and we forget this outrage that we're feeling right now. We're going to change. We're just going to become zombies again. And well, we're going to die. This, this country moment. is going to get, yeah. It, but see, unfortunately, you and I agree with that, but there's an entire, like, almost 50% of the country that seems to not think that way. Or we've been told and trained to think that we all think that way. But I got to tell you, other than an occasional douchebag I come across wearing a Trump hat or something like that, once we start talking, they're normal people. Everybody seems yeah. to be normal until you get it either on news programs or debates or this argument shit. So this separation and severance of us all is important. Also, it's teaching everybody more about this stuff and the fact that we can be together. Because if it got to, if, if our environment keeps heading the way it is, we're not going to be allowed to go outside anyways. When the yeah. sun flares keep getting worse, you know, I mean, dude, we That's are, we are the, the masters of our own demise. What are your future plans? That's a weird question right now. Like, that was, a, but they're really... Yeah, let's talk about how about your uh you've become quite the uh the how-to girl on how to improperly and then properly shotgun a beer. Uh okay. I'm 38 years old and I have never shotgunned a beer before. And all my coworkers are doing it and sending videos and I've succumbed to peer pressure. So this isn't a beer, it's a hard seltzer. We'll see how it goes. I'm so scared. I don't even know how to cut it. <laughs> okay. I cut it. And now I think I just do this. Whoa. Uh. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty um, cool. I mean, my future plans. So, um, yeah, I was, uh, I'm 38 and I never shotgun to beer, but I work for a brewery and they're all on this Facebook page and they were all shotgunning beers. And I was like, well, fuck, like I need to figure out how to shotgun a beer. So I went through some, uh, uh, some processes, um, and I learned, I fucked up a couple times, but I did it. So, you know what? I'll try to edit them into this. Let me tell you. Okay, you guys, here's attempt number three. I found this knife in my house. I think my friend left it there. I feel like I'm looking cooler already. Okay, we're going to still take Ian's advice, tilt it down, now I'm going to take Carl's advice, and there we go. Oh, oh shit, look at that. Ooh, I like this knife. Okay, now I'm going to also take Ian's advice and tilt it up, that way you guys can't see when I spill everywhere. Oh God, I'm terrified. Okay, here I go. <sighs> I think that was better. Did that look cool? I really just wanna look cool. Also, I have a master's in business. So, you know, goals. Like, okay, yeah, bye. You're, you're a camera facing the light. I, could, I mean, I could do that too if you want. Yeah. No. Is that better? Um, I uh, am going through an identity crisis, a midlife, a quarter life crisis. Ugh. I mean, unless I die from the coronavirus, then it's just a fucking current crisis. But, um, hi, Allison, meet Allison. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you know all of this, but, you know, I worked my fucking ass off in my, um, younger days <clears throat> where, like, at 26, I was a senior, um, manager, you know, and then at, like, 32, I was an associate director of fucking analytics and I got my master's degree in business and blah, 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 all this shit. And you know what I'm coming to find out, which to be fair, lots of people have known this forever, but for me, uh, none of that means shit. And I don't know what my fucking goals are. You know what my goals are, Rot? Here's my goal. I just found out that um, there is a, a lemon thyme plant growing in my garden. Nice. And my goal is to make a candle, a lemon thyme scented candle. Yeah, you've got a lot of garden stuff out there that you could do. You've got a lot, a lot out there. Well, that's yeah. good. That's about as far into the future as we can need to go. My future thing is to interview as many of my friends as I can, try to get Rockcast views up. That Rockcast with Jocado hit 50. Like in a Hell couple yeah. days, that's a lot of views, man. Hell uh, yeah! You know, and then start working on music. Now that I'm making a decent little bit of amount of money and paying off my child support quickly, uh, I'm gonna start buying stuff to set this up better and uh, start recording my own music. I've been, I've been, I stay up till like eight in the morning these days, just trying to fucking be creative and out. I am so impressed with everything that you've done, dude. Kind of got I'm stopped right I'm in the middle of it. I was ready to get. I missed my YMCA. I missed. I didn't realize how good I had it. See, even yeah. there, man. You know, I had my truck. I had my thing. I could go anywhere and sleep. Right now, I should be sleeping in a campground, paying fucking one hundred forty dollars a week, and then I'd have my own little spot, and you know, I'd be able to leave work every day. Go fucking with your hair. It's fine. Well, it fucked. It's it's I. It's get showing a bald spot, which I okay. Anyway. No, I know, dude, but 
the point is I'm impressed with you and everything that you have, everything that you've accomplished. And I just had to do what I had to do or so I was going to die. You know what I mean? Like it was very selfish of me. Or maybe I just instinctively, I knew something big was coming and I had to get into my world. I mean, I'm maybe built for this. I go out and do stuff with people that like you were saying in the beginning, it's all about energy consumption. I need humans to uh, feed that beast that's inside me, but yeah. I'm not a real boy. And this is, this is the same to me, you know, and you can't fucking drunk assault hug me, which I got to admit, it's been awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. You hug me sometimes too. Only when you least expect it. True, and that's Usually the best. It's a defensive mood to, to keep you from from getting all lovey dovey up to you. Know? Like, no, I love it's, you so much. it's a supportive hey. move. When you can tell I'm sad, and you hug me, and a hug from loves. you is like a hug from fucking um I don't know who's like a famous person. I don't well, know. You know what it is like? It's like I'm not a whore with my hugs. I don't just give them away to anybody. You call me and my hugs hug. my. With your hugs, when you, you call drink, me a hug whore, you get you get a little you get a little huggy huggy slutty, slug That's slug fair. sluggy. That is fair. If I'm any kind of whore, it's a hug whore. Definitely, and a whore for falling. You 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 and gravity are not friends, my friend. No, no. We're you know, not. The thing is that you fell down regular stairs. I mean, I expect it to happen on those that looks like laid in by a very high meth head stairs that go up to your house, but no, you. Don't go in their house anymore. Just stay the fuck out. That place is cursed. To be fair, though, their dog attacked me a week ago and bit me. I know. And so, I, so I was scared of the dog. And then when I was going down the stairs the other day to do laundry, the dog saw me and barked and started running towards me. And that's when I lost my balance because it was like, the dog! You know, I was like, he's going to kill me again. Um, kick them that, in the head that stops them from fucking biting I, on you. I know, but instead, I just fell down the stairs. You gonna keep doing your dinner for dads? Hell yeah! Have you seen the newest? No, I watch it later. You're my only fan. Fuck you. It's not you true. Do. I see all the fucking comments, but also the regular channel. We gotta figure out how to get those two together. You've got a YouTube channel now. You need to make sure through your YouTube channel you like the Dinner for Dad playlist through okay. Rockcast or something. I'll figure it out. I may have to actually Dropbox them all to you, and you'll have to upload them all. Which you no, but, Speaking of that, buddy, I got to go. I have to make some yeah. food for dinner. This is pretty – that was pretty much perfect. Anyways, well, thank you for being on uh, Rockcast 2.0. Thank you for being my friend. I will. I'm going to – I love you, Thank Allison you. Rose. I miss you. I miss you so much, buddy. You're the best. Well, I'll be by tomorrow to use your shower, so you can hear me. Okay, soon. cool. I'll see you tomorrow. No puffer clean fish. Out, clean out all the all the Baxter hair or any other hair that's in there. The Baxter hair. Yeah. yeah. All right. Love you. Wait, wait. We got to do this. Real Thanks, Thanks for listening. listening. This is a dinosaur production. Listen 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 Thanks for having me, sir. See you tomorrow. Night night. Bye. Bye.